Euclid's extended algorithm is a way to compute Besut's identity without first doing Euclid's algorithm and then going backwards as we did previously. So in Euclid's extended algorithm we just make one pass similar to Euclid's algorithm and then in the end we will find the numbers s and t such that we have the greatest common divisor is equal to s times n1 plus t times n2. So this algorithm goes as follows, where we initiate some variables, we initiate r as r minus 2 is n1, s minus 2 is 1, t minus 2 is 0, r minus 1 is n2, s minus 1 is 0, and t minus 1 is 1. So when we have done this initialization, we do for all i's larger than or equal to 0, we derive first qi, which is equal to r i minus 2 divided by r i minus 1, and then we round this down to the nearest in integer. Then we compute r i as r i minus 2 minus q i r i minus 1. Then we update s i as s i minus 2 minus q i times s i minus 1, and we update t i as t i minus 2 minus q i times t i minus 1. And then we do this until we have r i plus 1 equals 0, and when we have that we know that r i will be the greatest common divisor between n1 and n2, and we can write r i as s i times n1 plus t i times n2. So this is what we are after, this is what we are looking for, this is Pesu's identity. I'm not going to prove this in this video, but from the proof we actually see that we have a more general result. So for each step in this algorithm we will have that rj equals sj times n1 plus tj times n2, and this will hold for all our j's. So we make an example of this, and we're going to continue with the same example as we had before, where n1 is 13 11 and n2 is equal to 391. So in this algorithm we're going to keep track of our i's, we're going to keep track of our qi, our ri, si and ti. So these are the variables that we have in our algorithm. And if we recall how we are initializing our variables, we have i minus 2 and minus 1. So for q we do not have any initialization. For r we initialize them as n1 and n2. So we have 13, 11 here and we have 391 here. And for s we initialize them uh, as 1 and 0. And for t we initialize them as 0 and 1. So this is the initialization of our algorithm, and now we can move on to filling out this table. So now we fill this table out by using the expressions that we have here as we defined them before in our algorithm. So we start by the first row, where i equals 0. So qi here, q0, will be equal to 13, 11 divided by 391, and then we round this down. So this will be equal to 3. So here we write a 3. R0 will be equal to Ri minus 2, which is 13, 11, minus Qi, which is the 3 that we just computed, times Ri minus 1, which is 391. So this is the remainder when we divide 13, 11 by 391. So this will be 138. S0 will now be updated according to this expression, so it will be SI minus 2, which is 1, minus QI, which is 3, times SI minus 1, which is 0. So this will be equal to 1. So here we write 1. T0 will be updated as this expression, so we have TI minus 2, which is 0, 
minus qi which is 3 times ti minus 1 which is 1 and this will be equal to minus 3 so we update this as minus 3 and then we just continue to the next row we have the next q so q1 will be 391 divided by 138 rounded downwards we will have 2 with the remainder 115 the next s will be 0 minus 2 times 1 so here we have minus 2 and t1 will be 1 minus 2 times minus 3 which will be 7 for i equals 2 we will have q2 which is 138 divided by 115 which is 1 with the remainder 23 and s2 will be 1 minus 1 times minus 2 so this will be 3 and t2 will be minus 3 minus 1 times 7 which will be minus 10 for the third row we have q3 which is 115 divided by 23 this is 5 with the remainder 0 and here s3 is minus 2 minus 5 times 3 so this is minus 17 and t3 will be 7 minus 5 times minus 10 so this will be 57 so we have found our GCD which is the remainder before the first zero remainder so here is the zero remainder and this is the rem remainder before so this is our GCD but what we can also see here is that we have found our more general results which says that rj equals sj times n1 plus tj times n2 and this is true for all our j so we can look here if we start looking at the row for i equals zero what we have found here is that we can write 138 equals 1 times 1311 minus 3 times 391 and for the next row we can write 115 equals minus 2 times 1311 plus 7 times 391 and here we have 23 equals 3 times 1311 minus 10 times 391 and finally here we have 0 equals minus 17 times 1311 plus 57 times 391 and the actual expression that we are looking for in Bessou's identity is this expression that we have here. So we can now write the GCD of 1311 and 391 equals 23, which also equals 3 times 1311 minus 10 times 391 and the 3 here is our s and the minus 10 here is our t 